If you're looking to make a transition into cybersecurity and you have a full-time job, this video is for you. I am going to give you my step-by-step -step formula for how you can transition into cybersecurity without a college degree, without a certification. And if you do this process that I'm telling you, it will actually set you up to be able to excel at the certification that you believe that you need. And I actually found this process out by accident. Is it just me? Let me know in the comments. Do the best things come to you by accident or maybe not? So guys, back in 2010, I was not working in tech. I was actually working in accounts receivable. I was inserting um, billing orders, updating transactions, as well as um, some contract management things for a copier company by the name of Rico. Multi-billion dollar company, offices and locations around the world. So in my accounts receivable department, there was about 10 of us. And whenever somebody's computer would break, they would literally have to box it up and ship the computer to New Jersey to the IT help desk. Today, that makes, heck, then it made no sense. Today, even more. I don't know if they're still doing that. Absolutely makes no sense. Anyway, so instead of me allowing my team to continue to ship these computers back to New Jersey, I decided that things needed to change. Things needed to change because when you have 10 people on a team and a mountain of work, guys, because we were working like 60 hours a week at $13 per hour, sheesh. Anyway, I decided that I would stop them from shipping those computers back and I would take ownership and figure out how to fix the computers myself because I was not going to be the man putting in all the work and they sitting over there getting paid. Your man's not having that, not having that. So during this process, depending on the issue of the computer, I taught myself how to fix them by performing research online, getting the vendor's manual. So I learned about installing patches, rolling back patches, installing firmware, updating drivers, removing viruses. And it piqued my interest into the whole tech space because before then, I wanted to be an accountant like my big sister. And that was just the baby steps of getting there because I didn't finish college. Now, as I continued to be the um, computer repair guy, people started realizing at the company that, hey, this guy actually knows a thing or two about computers. So my responsibilities informally increase. So now whenever new computers arrive for um, new employees, I would actually be the person that would set up the computers. Now, keep in mind, guys, nobody was asking me to do any of this. I was enjoying it. So the more I wanted, the more I wanted to learn, the more that I would do. So setting up new user computers, getting their access set up, I absolutely enjoyed that. And then the worst thing happened. And I still remember June 12th, 2010. The executives fly in from Japan. They tell us how great of a job that we've been doing here in the Dallas office. And then they let us know that they are shutting down operations after a merger with a company by the name of Icon. So what they did was they shipped all of the jobs to Tustin, California, Orange County, shut down the Dallas office. All 70 of the employees, including me, were laid off. So I find myself already in a pretty bad financial position because I'm making $13 per hour. I don't have a formal education but now I don't have a job. I don't have a job. So what do I do? I decided that I was going. What's up, Cyber Heroes? This video is brought to you by Cyber Hero School. Join me and thousands of other Cyber Heroes and you can get access to everything that I've learned from going from $13 per hour to a million dollars plus per year as a cybersecurity consultant, all for less than a trip to the grocery store. Get access, click the link in the description. Peace. I'm going to take this opportunity to reinvent myself. So you guys know me as Boyd Clewis, internationally recognized cybersecurity expert, the six-figure tech career coach, trademark, just got approved this week. Shout out to my attorney. Anyway, um, I was not that guy then. I was La Boyd Clewis, the accounts receivable specialist. But I knew I wanted to go into tech, so something had to change. When I took a look at my resume, I did not see an IT guy on my resume. What I saw was a low paid accounts receivable person that has some decent experience that's not being articulated well on paper. 
So during that time of being laid off, I decided to get a study manual, do some additional study and learning formally about computers, operating systems, and I went and got the A plus certification. I was actually able to get that A plus certification very quickly through some self study. And during that self study process, I was like, all right, I figure that I really have this. Now I did something that is especially interesting and I wouldn't recommend these days. I updated my resume and I went and applied for a job. Now I found this job on Craigslist and this was a junior network technician role. And I went and interviewed for the job and I got it. So let me let me let y'all in on a little secret real quick. Think about this. I decided that I want I wanted to go in tech and I went and got this A plus certification and then I got a job, right? No, guys, that is not the way it works. And that's what many of you watching this video probably believe that you need. That is probably the biggest takeaway that you got from this story so far is that I went and got a certification and got a job. And if that's the case, if you made it this far, you are about to get the juice because that is not it. If I just would have went and got a certification, I would have not have gotten that job, nor would I have gotten the opportunity to interview. So let me tell you what LeBoy did at that time. Because I knew where I wanted to go, I told you guys, I looked at my resume and what I saw was a low paid accounts receivable specialist. I had to reinvent myself. I changed my name from LeBoyd to Boyd. I dropped the L.E. Racism exists. I don't care what you think about it. When you see Love Boyd, you see a black man on paper. I tried to give myself every opportunity possible. I'm just being transparent here. Instead of having my resume uh, title be accounts receivable specialist, I changed the role to focus on where I wanted to go with relevant experience. I changed it to tech support. Instead of those resume bullet points talking about um, updating billing records, it was all about um, system patching, driver updating, removing viruses, all of the tech things that I did. So now the accounts receivable void is completely gone. And I represented myself as the tech support void. But here's the deal. I could speak to everything that was on my resume because I had actually done it, right? I had actually done it. And so when people have asked over the past few years, hey, dude, like how have you been able to help so many people without tech backgrounds land these jobs in cybersecurity and get these high paying jobs? Because like entry level positions don't pay six figures. So like how are your clients getting six figure jobs? And I'll tell you this, it's because the ones that actually follow what I say go through the reinvention process. And that's what I developed. This process that I went through where I transitioned from accounts receivable to tech because I actually did things at my job is what I called the cyber hero reinvention. So if you are working at a company right now, that is one of the biggest, biggest assets that you have. Because what you can do is first identify what part of tech or cybersecurity you want to go into. See if that department or role exists at your company and then volunteer your services to learn more, to actually do some things. Because the truth is, if you just do something one time and you can speak to it because you have that muscle memory, now you can claim that as experience. One of the reasons why people struggle with trying to transition into tech is because they keep holding on to the past of unrelevant experience, not unrelevant, irrelevant experience on their resume and it stops them from getting a job. Because if you're trying to transition into cybersecurity, but your resume says that you're a school teacher, why would a recruiter call you for that, for that position just because you believe that you can execute it well? It doesn't make sense. These roles are super important and critical to companies, plus recruiters get paid for getting you hired, so they are going to completely skip over your resume because there is a misalignment with the role that you say that you want versus the person that they see on paper. And one of the challenges that my clients resist me on is like, boy, how I can't put this title on my resume. It's a lying. Let me tell you this. Right now, guys, I am the CEO of Baxter Clue of Cybersecurity. I am also the CEO 
ISO. I'm the Chief Information Security Officer. I am the Chief Information, I'm the Chief Executive Officer. I'm also the Director of Marketing, the Director of Sales. I'm also a teacher instructor. Depending on what type of opportunity I'm looking for, I would modify my resume based on the relevancy of what it is that I want to accomplish. So if you have one resume and it's one size fits all, then it is going to be very difficult for you to land a new job. So here's the kicker on top of this. So this tech support piece of my life at this company, Rico, lasted for about six months. I worked at the company for three years. But now on my resume, it shows me as a tech support person for three years. But again, I could speak to what I had done and I was very well. I was, what's the word I'm looking for? I could speak to what I, what I had done and I was actually good at it, which made passing that A plus certification a piece of cake because I was already doing the work. What most people try to do is go get a certification and then try to force this tech certification on a resume that is not a resume of a tech person and then get upset when you don't get hired instead of playing the game the way it was meant to be played. Get the experience at the company that you are working at. Once you actually start doing these things, by the way, nobody turns down free help. Once you start doing these things, it will give you that muscle memory, that ability to speak about what you have done. Find the relevant certification that aligns with what you want to do. Reinvent yourself and then pivot. Reinvent yourself and pivot. And the people that don't get this are the ones that are going to be stuck exactly where they are for forever because they are concerned about what other people's thoughts and opinions about them when it comes to making this pivot. Now, keep in mind, I worked with 70 people at this other location. Do you think I care about them seeing my LinkedIn profile title change from accounts receivable to tech support? Absolutely not. Did that information pass a background check? Absolutely, because the only thing that a background company can check is the dates that you worked at a company. That's it. That's it. So if you can be bold and be different, you can transition into tech, cybersecurity, without having to go out and get a bunch of certifications first. You can leverage the job that you already have. And depending on how well you do, you may be able to make a lateral move at the company that you're working at so that you can get some additional experience under your belt before you exit. Because if you make a lateral move, oftentimes the max the max of a pay bump you may get is 10%. But if you exit the company and go externally, you could get 30, 40, 50, 60%. But you have to be fluent in what you did and the value that you brought. And when you do this, when you do the reinvention, you can make it happen. If you think any of this is cap that I'm telling you, it's literally all in my book published with Forbes. By the way, if you haven't read it, you should. Literally, the reinvention. This is how I was able to get in tech. And by the way, this is the same framework and principle that I leveraged for every certification I have achieved. And I have a gazillion of them. I did the work first, and then I go get certified to validate what I already know. I don't go get certified to try to get a job. First of all, the companies that I work for pay for the certifications that I go get because I know how to align their vision with my vision to present the certification as a value piece for the company. When you learn how to do these things, you can continue to grow and grow your career. But everything that I told you in this video requires you to take action. So if you take no action, nothing changes. Nothing changes unless you do. So guys, that is it for this video. Drop a comment if you appreciate this video. You got questions about it. Are you ready for the reinvention? Are you nervous? What's holding you back? Only thing holding you back is you. See you in the next video. Peace.